The second phase on this plane is the lettering. Normally, this would be done by Jean, which is me, or Greg, but my shoulder was bare, so we brought in Howard Bertram, a good friend and a fabulous sign painter from Arizona, from Bertram Graphics. And Howard did the mask. Now he's going to set it up. He's going to line it up. Here he's smoothing it out. This is his top mask. He's got to line this up perfectly with the one underneath. Not sure I would really want to be the one with the exacto blade next to this plane, but he seems to be pretty comfortable here. Hopefully, all of this is going to work. He's going to get a nice straight edge. Here he's putting a second mask on top of the star that I actually sanded and painted white, getting it ready for him before he got here. You had to cover the whole plane, or at least the whole section of the plane, because Howard's about ready to use an airbrush. We want to make sure that we don't overshoot. Now his forte, of course, is airbrush, but he is one of the most amazing hand letterers I think I've ever seen. So here he is laying in the, uh, the yellow for the bottom of the letters. So when Howard did the design for the, uh, for the star for Russian to get you, he decided that a linear blend was going to be really necessary for this plane. I told him I thought he was crazy, but he's the man with the airbrush. I'm not. Going to make it a little lighter. Going to fade it up to the white to the top of the letters. Now we're going to take all this material, all this paper off the plane, just so we know that uh, we, di we didn't hit the plane. We didn't want to hit the plane and have to repaint the whole plane. That would have been a major problem. So Howard's checking his design here, and now he's going to pull the mask apart, exposing the parts of the plane for the next color that he's going to lay down. It's interesting that uh, even though it's his design, it's confusing. You can make a mistake easily, and a mistake is not what you want to do when you're pulling off a mask. So when you're working with a mask, it's, uh, it's reversed. Everything's reversed. You're clearing the area that you're going to paint. And Howard's being very careful not to make a mistake here. Here we are taking a break. Gene had the idea of Howard airbrushing Russian to get you on, a, on my white t-shirt. It really felt uh, cold and wet. I thought it was coming through and it was going to be permanently on my back. I painted the rest of the plane wearing the shirt and uh, decided to leave the shirt here in the hangar for the owner. I've known Howard for years and I was looking forward to working with him. I've always been a, a really a huge appreciator or fan uh, of uh, sign painters, letterers, designers. It's a real special craft and talent and art. So I'm standing back and watching Howard do his work and it really blows me away. The, uh, the precision and accuracy is ability to uh, to paint such a perfectly straight line freehand uh, it's uh, it's it's a real real craft real talent and he did this in one day he came in in the morning and by the end of the day it was done as we were nearing completion uh, of the painting the client decided he wanted a, a Russian symbol on the bomb and we came up with the hammer and sickle what else and I ask Howard to do that. Take a look at how perfect it is. So we're at the end of the project here, and I'm putting the final touches. And the red star on, on the girl's uh, hat, which is taken from an old medal from the time frame. And uh, one of the things the client wanted was the gun to be smoking. 
So that's the last thing that I paint is the smoking gun. So this is the third warbird that I painted on, and it's really been an honor to do this. And uh, thanks for allowing me to share this with you.